double integral I make use of polar coordinates that is I make the transformation <coughs> x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta then we know that d x d y uh, the element of area uh, in x y plane gets transformed to r d r d theta that is the element of this then your r varies from 0 to infinity because r is a non negative variable and theta varies from 0 to 2 pi this is your polar coordinate transformation. Okay. So, therefore, i square then becomes 1 upon 2 pi 0 to infinity 0 to 2 pi and e raise to minus half r square, because this was x square plus y square will become r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta, since cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1. So, it reduces to r square and this is r d r d theta right and again this is in a nice form, because uh, now you see you have r here and you have e raise to minus half r square. So, again we will uh, make this transformation right that r square is equal to t that is what I am doing here and so your uh, 2 d r d r will be d t. So, r d r will be half d t and so that is what I have written here half d t and this will go to e raise to minus half t. So, this is and your um, uh, right and see the um, the uh, uh, limits are 0 to 2 pi 0 to this thing. Now, here what I have done is already because uh, theta does not appear here anywhere. So, therefore, this is <coughs> simply 1. So, the in this in with respect to theta this just integrates to 2 pi which I have written here and then uh, it is only integration with respect to r and to integrate this I make the transformation r square is equal to t and so this helps me to reduce it further and uh, this is um, you know minus 2 times e raise to minus half t 0 to infinity. So, this reduces to this which is equal to 1. So, we have verified that the uh, normal uh, p d f that we have defined is uh, a valid p d f okay. uh, and then now uh, the second step is to compute the uh, expectation and uh, instead of ex computing for E x, we will compute expectation of x minus mu by sigma. That will be easier, because we know that uh, the expectation of x is actually mu. So, we will show that this expectation is 0 and therefore, um, get the answer immediately. So, here uh, the only uh, in this integral you get this term x minus mu by sigma. Okay. And, um, uh, so, again I make the substitution x minus mu by sigma is equal to y okay, and uh, that reduces the integral to this. Again it is of the same form you see uh, that is why the uh, expressions may look uh, cumbersome, but uh, the working is not very difficult and it is just a question of little patience and you start uh, seeing where the calculations are going. So, um, now you have this. So, again you make the transformation y square equal to t the same steps and you get this and so. So, now what I am saying is that before I make this uh, substitution, I will uh, break up this integral to minus infinity. See uh, one way uh, I can immediately from here conclude that this integral is 0, because this is an odd integral right y uh, is here. This is here the change of sign will not matter, but here the you know, change of sign will matter. Since this is from minus infinity to infinity, this integral will be 0 you know one of the. So, uh, I just thought that I will show you the steps. So, what I am doing is I am breaking it breaking up this integral from minus infinity to 0 plus 0 to infinity. Okay. And then when you make the transformation that uh, y square is t, then you see uh, this becomes plus infinity, because when y is minus infinity the square will be plus infinity. So, this is from. So, this will be infinity to 0 and the integral will be e minus half t just as we did here and then this will be 0 to infinity. Okay. So, now uh, it is the same integral except that here the uh, limits are uh, uh, upside down. So, when you change the limits it will become minus sign. So, there will be a minus sign here and the same integral with a plus sign. So, when you add uh, the result is 0. Okay. So, uh, I, I just showed you the steps in case you were not very sure, but otherwise we could have concluded our computation at this step only and said that this is equal to 0. 
Okay. So, since this is 0, expectation of x minus mu by sigma, sigma is a constant, it goes out. Therefore, this implies that expectation of x is equal to mu. Okay. So, um, I had shown you that the uh, normal uh, p d f is symmetric about mu and this is also the mean and in fact, mu has all the properties. Later on, I will show some more properties of mu. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, to compute the variance of uh, x, which is actually uh, since mu is the mean, it is actually expectation of x minus mu whole square. right? Um, and this uh, I will write in this form. So, now here what you have to do is again if you first make the transformation that x minus mu by sigma is t. So, uh, d x by sigma uh, can be uh, replaced by d t right? and uh, the limits remain the same. So, this is a simple integral and this becomes uh, sigma square because you have x minus mu whole square. So, this is sigma square t square, this is it. Now, what I do here is the t square I break up into t and t, because this integral we have handled already right? while computing the uh, this thing. And uh, so, therefore, we will do integration by parts. This will be my first function. That means, I take the integral of this multiply by this and then the derivative of this into the integral of this. This is your formula. right? So, um, uh, this integral I have shown you is e raise to minus half t square um, this t into this thing and uh, uh, okay. uh, no, no, why am I, huh. okay. I am actually computing this for you. So, I am saying t e raise to minus half t square d t uh, is half when I make the transformation t square is s then 2 d t is d s. So, uh, this reduces to this and therefore, to this. Right? Now, applying integration by parts, uh, the integral of this I have already computed for you is this minus e raise to minus 1 by 2 s. And so, uh, this will be t into when I transform back again, substitute for s from here, this is t square. So, then t into e raise to minus half t square minus infinity to infinity, you can see that this is 0. Right? because uh, this is t square and so in the denominator t square e raise to t square, e raise to infinity is much much larger than t in the numerator. So, therefore, this will be 0 you will be left with this and then here again um, this is what this is your you know normal p d f where your mu is 0 and sigma is 1. So, the 1 upon root 2 pi is missing. So, therefore, this integral will be equal to root 2 pi because with 1 upon root 2 pi this will become 1. right? So, therefore, this whole thing is 1. So, this is this integral is equal to root 2 pi. So, I write root 2 pi which cancels with this and this is sigma square. So, therefore, the variance of uh, the random variable. So, therefore, the parameters are now uh, it is very clear what the parameters uh, denote mu is the mean when we say now a normal mu sigma square uh, mu is the mean and sigma square is the variance. So, um, we just saw that normal distribution uh, the parameter mu is the mean and uh, sigma square is the variance. Now, uh, suppose x is n mu sigma square um, and we consider the random variable y equal to alpha x plus beta, where alpha is a positive number and alpha and beta are some real numbers. right? Um, so, uh, I mean I am continuing with the properties of the normal distribution. So, if you want to find out the a p d f of y, then we start with the cumulative distribution function. So, probability y less than or equal to t is probability alpha x plus beta less than or equal to t, which uh, reduces to this. And since alpha is positive, the inequality remains intact. So, this is t minus beta upon alpha. Okay. And so, uh, this is your cumulative distribution function y, which is equal to the cumulative density function of x, but the parameter get, uh, the t replaces is gets replaced by t minus beta by alpha right so now if you differentiate both sides that means differentiate with respect to t then this will uh, become the pdf right and this is ddt of fx t minus beta by alpha which will be uh, 1 by alpha into fx of t minus beta by alpha right the derivative of capital fx will be the uh, pdf of the random variable x. And so, when you um, substitute you write down the expression for this, it will be 1 upon alpha 1 upon under root 2 pi into sigma 
e raise to minus 1 by 2 sigma square and your t gets replaced by t minus beta by alpha minus mu whole square. Just simplify the expression. This gives you t minus beta minus alpha mu whole square. Here you have alpha sigma and this is 2 uh, sorry uh, the alpha in the denominator comes here. So, this will be there will be into into alpha square also. I hope you can read it. Anyway, I am speaking it out or maybe let me just rewrite it whole thing here. Yeah, this is 2 alpha square sigma square. Okay. And so, uh, by our definition of the normal p d f, this will be uh, n the mean now becomes beta plus alpha mu and the variance becomes alpha square sigma square instead of sigma. right? So, therefore, you see that if you um, uh, make this transformation, where x is normal mu sigma square, then for y the expectation will become alpha mu plus beta, which anyway you can show from here also. This is alpha expectation of x plus beta, because beta is a constant and so this is alpha mu plus beta. Okay and the variance will be uh, just simply because the constant will not matter, since you will see when you write down the variance, you will write down um, this minus <coughs> uh, I mean uh, this minus this. So, beta will cancel alpha will come outside and so it will become square and so uh, either way you can verify that the for the for this random variable the mean will be beta plus alpha mu and the variance will be alpha square sigma square. Okay. So, uh, you can see that um, you can uh, carry on the properties of uh, normal variate quite easily. Now, an immediate consequence of this result is that if x is n mu sigma square, then uh, z which you write as x minus mu by sigma will be normal 0 1, right? because uh, what is happening? Your um, here alpha is actually 1 by sigma. If you uh, compare it with the uh, expression alpha x plus beta and your uh, beta is uh, minus mu by sigma. So, now if you substitute, because we said that the mean will become alpha mu plus beta for that one. So, here it will become uh, mu by sigma minus mu by sigma. So, it is 0 right? and similarly you can show that the variance will be 1. So, uh, the transformation uh, x minus mu by sigma results in a standard normal variate and which we refer to as n 0 1. Okay. Now, we have tables for uh, computing the various probabilities for uh, normal uh, 0 1 and you see that um, you can then compute the probabilities for uh, any random uh, normal uh, uh, random variate uh, through this and that is what because, because of that transformation. right? And I will work out a few examples to show you how it goes. So, anyway, this is the standard notation for, for a standard normal variate. This is your probability minus infinity to x. So, that means, this is the cumulative density function. Uh, so, this will be 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to x e raise to minus half y square d y. Okay. So, this probability is uh, given the notation. Now, um, the tables are given for x non negative for um, you know uh, values of x going up to well okay you will we'll also later on see that we don't need the values to be tabled for very large values of x um, then for x less than 0 we use the symmetry of the uh, pdf around because this standard normal so this is um, this is symmetric about uh, the, uh, the origin right and this is your this is this. right? Now, the symmetry means that uh, if you have x here, then the area to the right of this number is the same as the area to the uh, left of minus x. This is what symmetry means, because this area and this area are, are equal. Therefore, and since the, this is half area and this is 0 0.5. So, therefore, this shaded portion here is the same as the shaded portion here. And so, um, the formula is this. So, if you have tabled your values for x positive, then for x negative you can get by this and we can uh, verify this formula right away. 
uh, if you want to compute phi of minus x, then that is minus infinity to minus x of f x d x. Now, if you write um, uh, y as minus x, then x becomes minus y. So, uh, the limits go from infinity to y, right, infinity to y, f of minus y d y, right and uh, there is a minus sign here. So, if you interchange the limits, this becomes y to infinity f of minus y d y, which is 1 of minus no phi minus y, right, because this is now y to infinity. So, therefore, by the formula, this is this, but phi of minus y is phi of x. So, therefore, um, uh, I have shown you that this is 1 minus phi x. So, this formula has been verified. So, now, uh, you can get values of the um, cumulative density function for uh, negative positive both of x. Right. So, uh, let us look at a few examples. Suppose, x is normal 2 comma 4, that means the mean is 2 and the variance is 4. So, then you want to find the probability that x is between 2 and 4. So, I will use the transformation. So, here um, sorry, this should be z. That means, what I am doing is, I should, I will write in detail, I am subtracting 2 and dividing by 2. So, less than x minus 2 by 2, less than 4 minus 2 by 2. So, this probability goes here, right. And now, uh, so this is uh, 2 minus 2 0 and this is your standard normal variate, right. x minus mu by sigma is normal 0 1, for which we always have this notation of z. Right, and this is 4 minus 2 by 2, which is 1. So, uh, this probability you can compute in terms of the standard normal variate in this way, and by our notation, this is phi of 1 minus phi of 0. Okay. And from tables, I get that phi of 1 is 0 0.8413, and phi 0 will be 0 0.5, because we have said that the uh, standard normal is uh, symmetric, the p d f is symmetric about the origin. So, uh, this portion of the, so this area under the curve will be equal to 0 0.5 and this will be also 0 0.5. So, phi 0 will always be uh, 0.5, because this is the area for phi 0, right, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 0. So, that will be half of the area, which is 0 0.5, right. So, therefore, uh, this is the problem. So, therefore, very conveniently, once you have the tables available for the standard normal, you can compute it for any uh, normal variate, right. Then um, again, uh, find probability x less than 0 for this variable. So, here again, I make the transformation uh, x minus 2 by 2 less than. So, this will be minus 2 by 2. So, this is probability z less than minus 1. So, which is phi of minus 1 and then I use this formula this formula. So, phi of minus 1 is 1 of minus phi 1. Phi 1 I already know is 0 0.8413. So, this is 1 minus 0 0.8413, which is 0 0.1587. Right. Now, when you want to compute absolute x minus 1 greater than 3. So, what are you saying here? You are saying that your uh, x minus 1 should be greater than 3 and x minus 1 should be less than Minus, that means, x minus 1 should be less than minus 3 and x minus 1 should be greater than 3. Yeah. So, from here what do you get? That x should be greater than 4. So, from 4 to infinity and from here you get that x should be less than minus 2. So, that means, it should be from minus infinity to minus 2. So, that is what we have done. Um, I have written that um, this event is equal to uh, the un that means, x must be either here minus infinity to minus 2 or it must be in the set 4 to infinity. Well, I have used a different notation here than here does not matter. Now, since these two sets are disjoint, you can see right minus infinity to minus 2 and this is 4 to infinity. So, um, I can write the probability as the sum of the individual probabilities and so, I get this and again um, I transform my variable x minus 2 upon 2. So, this remains minus infinity, this is minus 2. So, minus 2 by 2 and here again I use the same transformation to reduce it to a standard normal variate and therefore, uh, this becomes phi of minus 2. 
yeah, because phi of minus infinity is 0 plus 1 minus uh, this will be what? Uh, this is uh, 1 and this is infinity. So, here phi infinity is 1 and this is minus phi of 1, right? Because yes, you all agree that uh, this is uh, phi of uh, infinity, is, uh, I mean uh, this uh, phi of infinity will be 1. Okay. So, uh, therefore, and phi of minus 2 you can write as 1 minus phi 2 again by our formula for computing negative uh, probabilities in terms of positive uh, this thing and therefore, this is it. So, I just substitute the values phi 2 from the tables is 0 0.9772, this is 0 0.51 and so this is the answer. So, one can go on and therefore, uh, the whole idea would be that you sit down calculate a few of such probabilities by yourself to uh, get, become familiar. Okay. Now, let us just take uh, an example here. The annual rainfall in inches in a certain region is normally distributed with mean 40 inches and uh, sigma that is the standard we call by the way I did not name it, but um, sigma this is under root sigma square is uh, referred to as standard deviation. Okay, this is also known as standard deviation. So, uh, standard deviation is 4, that means variance is 16. What is the probability that starting with this year, it will take over 10 years before a year occurs having rainfall of over 50 inches. So, let us understand the problem. First, they are saying that the annual rainfall is normally distributed. That means, if every year you um, uh, add up the uh, total rainfall uh, in that particular region, then uh, those uh, numbers will be uh, fitting a normal distribution, which has a mean 40 inches and standard deviation 4. Right. So, the numbers that you uh, get as the uh, total rainfall in a year for um, different years. So, that has a normal distribution. Right. Now, they are asking for a probability that starting with this year, you go on for 10 years and within those 10 years, uh, no year will have e rainfall more than 50 inches. So, it is you know actually compounded event, it is not a straightforward. So, let us see how we go about uh, computing this probability. So, to compute the probability x greater than or equal to 50, I will do the same trick, reduce this probability in terms of a standard normal variate. So, since mean rainfall was 40 inches, so x minus 40 standard deviation was 4. So, this now reduces to a standard normal variate. So, therefore, uh, the required probability is the same as probability z greater than or equal to 5 by 2, which is uh, oh, 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 this is 1 minus sorry. Uh, so, this has to be um, z greater than 5 by 2 would be 1 minus 5 pi by 2, right. And so, um, uh, this will be 1 minus of this, 1 minus 0 0.9938. And so, um, this will not be the required probability, we will have to write the number. Anyway, so what we will do is, uh, yeah, I will continue to say that p is 1 minus 0 0.9938 or maybe I will just do the, so this is 1 minus 0 0.9938. So, this is the uh, probability of, um, okay, is the probability of rainfall so, the probability would be a uh, standard normal variate greater than or equal to 5 by 2, which will be 1 minus phi of pi by 2, uh, 5 by 2 and that is uh, 1 minus 0 0.9938, because phi pi by 5 by 2 is 0 0.9938. So, this is probability this. Now, uh, this we can look upon as the probability of rainfall being more than 50 inches in a year and this we will treat as a success. That means, now you can say that in a year, the experiment is to uh, measure the rain and if the rainfall is more than 50 inches, we treat that as a success. right? So, that is what I said that the um, problem requires, uh, because the event is complex. So, first we computed the probability of the rainfall being more than 50 inches in a year, which came out to be this. Now, I want to find out that in 10 years, rainfall not more than 50 inches in any year. So, that means, if I treat those uh, 10 uh, every year as a trial, 
That means, the trial is you add up the total number of rainfall in that year and then you say you are saying that um, in 10 years there should be in none of the years that you count from beginning from this year, uh, the rainfall is more than 50 inches. That means, in other words, there is no success in these 10 trials. And so, the probability of no success in 10 trials would be 1 minus p raised to 10, which would be 0 0.9938 raised to 10. So, again please compute this number, because I had made a mistake. So, here this is, this will whatever this number, you can now use your calculators to compute this probability to say that, uh, that will be the probability that uh, in 10 years, uh, there will be the rainfall will be less than 50. So, this is, uh, so I am just trying to show you that how you first use the normal approximation and then um, I mean uh, the standardization and then you use the um, uh, binomial random variable uh, to compute the actual probability. So, median and mode of a normal distribution. Uh, this again, uh, see the uh, that's where I mean when you look at all these properties of this distribution, you you realize that it uh, it is a very interesting one. And this is uh, suppose uh, well, what we mean by the median of uh, distribution is uh, the number uh, for which the, um, uh, the for which your um, cumulative density function has the value 0 0.5. That means the area of the if you have this thing here, then this is the uh, this is the point uh, where this is x naught. So this area is 0 0.5 and this area is 0 0.5. And uh, since uh, we have already said that the uh, normal distribution is symmetric about x equal to mu, so that uh, immediately clear that uh, the area to the left of mu is 0 0.5 and area to the right of mu is 0 0.5. Okay. So, immediately we know that uh, a median, the median is also at x equal to mu. Right. Now, to define the, uh, to obtain the uh, mode point, uh, this is the point at which f x, the, the probability density function attains its maximum value. We did this for the binomial also, remember, and uh, the, what was the uh, uh, number at which the random variable attains its uh, maximum probability. So, now in this case, um, we will uh, have to find out the uh, maximum, the value, the value of x at which this function attains its maximum value. So this will be done by finding out the uh, di differentiating it, finding out the critical points. So and putting this equal to zero, the derivative. Now uh, you see that here, this is the derivative. So this portion is not zero. So therefore this is the only portion which will be zero, and therefore that gives you x equal to mu. So, x, x equal to mu is a point of maxima or minima essentially or it could be a point of inflection. But So, now we have to look at the uh, further the second order derivative to determine the nature of this critical point and uh, I have written down the expression for a second derivative. That means, you differentiate this expression again and compute it at uh, uh, evaluate it at x equal to mu. So, then you see this, this portion goes 0 because x equal to mu and here also when you put x equal to mu, you essentially get this. So, this is again e raised to 0, which is 1. So, you simply get minus 1 upon 2 pi sigma square, which is less than 0. So, if, if the uh, second derivative has negative sign at a critical point, that point must be a point of maxima. So, that much from calculus we can obtain. And so, therefore, um, uh, it is really interesting that x equal to mu is the mean, median and mode. So, it is all the things combined into 1. Okay. Uh, now, another important as I told you, I have been, uh, I mentioned that uh, de Mauer was uh, used to, uh, you initially defined uh, this normal distribution uh, to approximate binomial probabilities. So, let us formalize the uh, uh, procedure here. So, uh, this is um, the de Mauer Laplace limit theorem, which is that if S n is the number of successes in n trials of a binomial uh, random variable n comma p, then for uh, any a less than b. 
So, here of course, for the binomial, the mean is n p and the variance is n p q, right. So, for any a less than b, if you want to look at the probability of a less than s n minus n p upon root n p q less than or equal to b. So, you see what we have done is, we have standardized this um, uh, binomial random variable of um, um, successes in n trials, number of successes in n trials. So, it will be s n minus n p upon under root n p q. So, then uh, it is the, the de Morvan's Laplace theorem says that this probability can be approximated by uh, phi b minus phi a, where phi is your um, uh, cumulative distribution function for the standard normal uh, distribution okay, or for the standard normal variate. So, this will be phi b minus phi a as n goes to infinity. So, that means for large n, you can approximate this probability by phi b minus phi a. And later on, we will show that this uh, actually uh, is a very general, uh, I mean you can uh, talk about a more general result, where you do not really need to have the distribution as uh, binomial. And for any distribution, uh, this kind of thing, which we call as the central limit theorem, we will talk about it later. But right now, de Morvan's Laplace limit theorem simply says that, if you have uh, a binomial random variable, then if you want to compute the probability uh, that s n minus n p upon under root n p q. So, this lies between a and b, uh, a is strictly less than this, then this can be approximated by phi b minus phi a. This is the Laplace theorem. So, now uh, we will use this and so we say that now suppose you want to compute the probability that uh, c is strictly less than s n is less than or equal to d. And here of course, it is understood c is also uh, less, strictly less than d. Then uh, we will um, standardize uh, the whole inequality in the sense that we will uh, transform this to uh, c minus n p upon under root n p q, and this will be less than s n minus n p upon under root n p q, which will be less than or equal to d minus n p under root n p q. Okay. And now you see um, this becomes standard normal variate, and so uh, your a gets replaced by this in the theorem and your b gets replaced by this right and so i can say that uh, by the uh, de morvan laplace theorem that this probability which is the same as this uh, can be approximated by uh, phi of d minus np upon under root npq and phi of c minus np upon under root npq so this is the whole idea so therefore and these are these values are tabulated so given c d uh, n and p you can uh, look up the tables and compute this probability. And of course, uh, uh, if you want to compute the actual probability, then we will see through examples that it can be very, very cumbersome. So, in fact, this is a very useful theorem and it in a very uh, simple way uh, allows you to compute approximate uh, these uh, this probability. Right? And uh, of course, then uh, we will continue with uh, the computations for approximating these probabilities. Okay. Uh, what they said is that, uh, this is good enough, uh, as long as your n p into 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. So, that means, you do not require too many very, very large values of n, but as long as, uh, of course, if this number is larger than 10, you get a better approximation. And that you can also for yourself ex experiment with the problems, where you try to increase the value of n, and then see that uh, your uh, uh, the estimate will improve. Okay. So, anyway, but this gives good approximation as long as n p into 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. Okay. Now, um, there is an uh, um, important aspect to this uh, approximation, and that is the continuity correction factor, which I will uh, discuss here. So, you see, look at this curve. So, I have the binomial uh, curve here, the uh, bar chart and then uh, the red uh, line curve is the uh, normal approximation. And you see, what we are saying here is, that if you are asking for the probability x greater than, see um, this is uh, the shaded portion that you are looking for. So, here you want to say that probability x greater than 7. If you are asking for this probability x greater than 7, yeah. So, then if x greater than 7 means that x is greater than or equal to 8. So, to get that event, to get that probability, if you want a good approximation, 
see your uh, the rectangle the bar uh, that represents the probability at point 8. So, that is starting from 7.5. So, you want to cover that whole area, because you are wanting probability x greater than or equal to 8. So, therefore, uh, you will need to um, say that your uh, the approximating, approximating uh, standard normal variate should uh, be greater than or equal to 7.5 and not 8. Okay. So, uh, because the you, so you will want to say that for the continuity factor, you will say that you will do it from 7.5, because you want to use up the uh, approx uh, use, uh, include the area, which is at the point A, the probability, which is represented by at the point A by this uh, bar should get added to the uh, to, to your estimate. right? And similarly, if you are wanting, uh, let us say, um, so I have the uh, table here, uh, just look at the example. So, if you have x equal to 6, that means a single value, if you have x equal to 6, then you would want it between 5.5 and 6.5, because that is the rectangle, the bar that you constructed at 6, uh, that uh, uh, stands at from 5.5 to 6.5, and the length, uh, the height is the uh, probability of that. Uh, x equal to 6. right? So, therefore, um, the continuity factor that you require would be for probability x equal to 6, it will be 5.5 uh, and 6.5, your x must vary. Then, uh, because see the discrete situation, you are now um, approximating by a continuous situation. Then, as I said, x greater than 6 would be x greater than 6.5. And if x is greater than or equal to 6, then you are including 6, then you will have to go a little further down, right. That means, you will have to start from 5.5. If it is x greater than or equal to 6, then you will begin from 5.5. So, x would be greater than 5.5. If x is less than 6, that means x is less than or equal to 5, then again you will say that x is less than 5.5. So, that is very clear from this uh, graph. And x less than or equal to 6 would be x again, see the moment you have equal, then you have to go a little ahead of it 6.5, and if it, uh, it is um, strict inequality, then. So, the rule is very clear, and by looking at this figure, you can always. So, if you keep this in mind, then you will not go wrong, because you will realize that you have to um, include the area under the bar or the rectangle, which is for that particular value, uh, the limiting end value, and so you will have to accordingly uh, give the correction factor. Right. So, this is called the continuity correction factor, because you are estimating a discrete situation by a, uh, this thing. So, um, if you use the continuity correction factor, now let, let us uh, give a, uh, this thing, uh, let us give, let me give you, uh, show you the calculations through uh, an example. And uh, so, let me show you an example, uh, through an example, how we, what, what I mean by the continuity correction factor. So, let x be the number of times a fair coin. So, fair coin means that the probability of showing a head and a tail are the same and that equals half. Right. So, lands heads when it is flipped 49 times. Okay. x is the number of times a head shows up when I have flipped a fair coin 49 times. Now, find the probability that x is equal to 25. Use the normal approximation and then compare it with the exact probability. Okay. So, um, I want to compute probability x equal to 25. And as I told, I just discussed with you that since um, uh, this is a binomial random variable, you are trying to approximate it by a normal distribution. So, the uh, bar is actually when x equal to 25, the bar starts from 20, uh, 24.5 and ends at 25.5. So, this is the bar, right? and this the height is the uh, probability that you associate with x equal to 25. So, 24.5 and 25.5. So, therefore, I have to change the to approximate, again I should say this, that is the approximate, uh, this thing will be 24.5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 25.5. So, I am now approximating this event by this event, right? because of the continuity factor. And then, uh, because the mean, yeah, I am sorry, this should not be 49, I have done it correctly here. So, now, for this binomial random variable, uh, your um, uh, number of times you flipping the coin is 49, probability that your p is half. So, therefore, n p is 49 into 1 by 2, which is 24.5, right. So, it should be 
24.5 right and your variance is n p q. So, that is uh, 49 into uh, 4 uh, uh, divided by uh, divided by 4 and so under root of that would be and that is why I chose this 49 to make it perfect square. So, that is 7 by 2. Okay. So, this is now standardized. So, uh, x minus 24.5 divided by 7 by 2 would make it standard normal and so this is the uh, uh, event that you want to uh, you, you want to now find out the probability. So, this is this right and therefore, this is equal to 0 and this is 1 upon so 2 by 7. So, therefore, this is equal to phi of uh, 2 by 7 minus phi 0. Now, this is phi of 0.28 minus phi 0 uh, phi, uh, phi of 0.28 from the normal tables is equal to 0 0.6103 minus 0 0.5. Right. And so, this comes out to be 0 0.1103. So, this is our um, uh, probability that we have obtained for x equal to 25 uh, through a normal approximation. And uh, remember the condition was that your n p uh, q must be greater than or equal to 10. So, in our case our n p q is how much? n p q remember is 49 by 4. So, which is more than 10 right that is uh, our n p q is 49 by 4, which is equal to um, 42 uh, sorry uh, 12 point something 12 fours are 48. So, 0 0.25 in fact. So, this is more than 10 right and so uh, we applied the approximation and this is the result that we got right. Now, exact probability if you want to compute using your uh, binomial computations, then you see it is actually 49 choose 25 and 1 by 2 raise to 49, 49 trials and your p and q are the same. If you write out this number 49 into 48 up to 25, because that will be 49 minus uh, 25 plus 1 and then 25 factorial 1 upon 2 raise to 49. It took me almost half an hour to compute uh, from the, <laughs> the uh, sitting at the computers and this number comes out to be 0.11275. So, if you just look at it this here and that is what I am saying. Now, you compare it with. So, third decimal place uh, the number differs, the value differs and therefore, I would say that this is a good approximation and here you see um, our n p q was uh, only uh, 10 uh, 12 point uh, 2 5 and if you take larger n that means, if you had flipped the coin uh, uh, more than 49 then this uh, number would have improved. And just see the phenomenal calculations you had to do even for n equal to 49. I mean multiplying these numbers 24 numbers getting 25 factorial multiplying 249 times and then dividing. So, this this the, the amount of calculations that you would have to do for the exact probability uh, certainly is not required if you can approximate this probability by this simple method, because these table these values are already available to you. And so, this is what I am trying to say that um, you know as we go on you will see the uh, numerous applications uses of this concept of normal distribution and uh, its computations. So, I will continue with the examples of um, you know uh, binomial approximate uh, the uh, normal approximation of binomial probabilities and this uh, these are two good examples from the book by Ross Sheldon. Uh, as I told you that this is a book on probability theory and at the end of the course I will give you all these uh, references. So, I just thought I will uh, uh, you know give you a feeling of uh, you know some more examples to uh, uh, to reinforce the idea that uh, the uh, approximations of uh, discrete uh, probabilities uh, can be done by the continuous random variables and in a very uh, effective way. Okay. So, let us look at this example. The ideal size of a first year class at a particular college is 150 students. Okay. From past experience, the college knows that on the average 30 percent of those accepted for admission will actually attend the college. So, therefore, you know people uh, tend to apply to more than one college and then they of course, decide which is the best one for them. So, uh, they, the, the college has the experience that uh, only 30 percent of the people who have been accepted for admission will actually attend the college. Okay. 
So, um, therefore, the college adopts the policy of giving admission to 450, 450 students. So, that finally, when the you know uh, uh, drop out after the drop out rate, uh, they will still be left with the uh, with a class of size 150. So, this is the idea. So, they decide to offer admission to 450 students. Now, uh, compute the probability that more than 150 first year students attend the class. Right. So, given that 30 percent is the uh, uh, so, it means the probability of uh, uh, a person attending who has been given admission will attend college is 0.3. So, therefore, we want to find out. So, here of course, uh, we will uh, say x is the number of students who attend college and so, uh, the value of x will be equal to the uh, uh, we can treat uh, uh, the uh, person who has been given admission and attends college as a success. So, out of 450 people, uh, x will be the number of students who attend college and so this will be a binomial random variable with uh, uh, n as your 450 and your p as 0.3. Right? So, this is binomial 450 comma 0.3, because uh, we are treating that uh, the, uh, the experiment has been performed. That means, admissions have been offered to 450 students and out of this, those who attend, uh, who are actually come attend the college uh, is a success. So, the number of successes uh, we are saying is a binomial random variable. Right? So, therefore, you have to compute the probability. So, actually you want that the class size should be, so uh, you have to compute the probability of more than 150. That means, it should be 151, 152 and so on. So, therefore, when you write probability x greater than or equal to 151, then your continuity factor uh, when you apply, then this will become 150.5. Right, because you are actually asking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 151, because more than 150. So therefore, uh, we just standardize uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this variate, and therefore subtract x minus n p. N p is 450 into 0.3, and then divided by n p q. So 450 into 0.3 into 0.7, and do this to the right hand side also. So you get this. And then, of course, the advantage of taking a uh, solved example is that you have the calculations done for you. So, here this is actually the phi of 1.59. So, this number reduces to uh, 1.5. So, therefore, this is your standard normal probability from minus infinity to uh, sorry, uh, this is yeah to 1.59. So, we are writing this as 1 minus phi of. So, this number is 1.59. So, this required probability is 1 minus phi of 1.59, which comes out to be this 0 0.0559. So, hence this reduces to 6 percent of the time more than 150 of the 450 accepted students will attend college. So, the college is in good situation, because it is only 6 percent chance that uh, more than 150 people will actually come and attend the college, those who have been offered admission. Okay. So, this was one situation. Now, another uh, interesting problem, uh, this is the to determine the effectiveness of a certain diet in reducing the amount of cholesterol in the blood stream. 100 people are put on a diet. After they have been on the diet for a sufficient length of time, their cholesterol count will be taken. The nutritionist running the experiment has decided to endorse the diet, if at least 65 percent of the people uh, have a lower cholesterol count. Right. So, after the trial period, at the end of the trial period, you will again take uh, test the cholesterol in the blood stream and if the count is lower for 65 percent of the people, then uh, uh, after going on the diet. So, the nutritionist will, um, have I made the sentence for complete, the running the experiment has decided to do endorse. So, the nutritionist will endorse the diet and say yes, it uh, is has proven to uh, lower the uh, uh, cholesterol in the blood. Okay. So, um, now what we want to find out is, what is the probability that the nutritionist will endorse the diet, that the nutritionist endorses the diet, will endorse, okay, uh, did I write well, will endorse the diet, if in fact, it has no effect on the cholesterol level. So, what we are saying is that, suppose the diet has had no effect on the cholesterol, but uh, what is the probability that the nutritionist will still uh, endorse it. 
Okay. So, therefore, now the, uh, the way we are arguing out and so we have to now decide how to model the situation and the idea here is that uh, you know it is either way. See people may on their own uh, uh, have their cholesterol count come down and so the chance of that happening is uh, you know <laughs> equally likely either your cholesterol count goes up or it uh, comes down. So, that is a uh, equally likely uh, situation and therefore, uh, it is being said that okay, you can just take p equal to half. So, therefore, uh, we are assuming that the uh, diet has had no effect on the cholesterol level. So, uh, but the uh, since the uh, count is going to be taken after the trial period and then if it turns out that 65 percent of the people have lowered their count, then they will be uh, then the diet will be endorsed. So, therefore, uh, we will work with p equal to half. So, I hope it is clear. So, what we are assuming is that uh, chance of the count being go going up and down is equally likely. So, therefore, uh, we will take p to be half and x is the number of people whose uh, whose cholesterol uh, level is lower. Right. Then uh, see what, what we are looking for is, so the binomial random variable and therefore, uh, this, uh, this is the uh, probability sigma uh, 65 to 100, 100 i half raised to 100, right, because uh, uh, r and n minus r both are uh, will add up to n since p is half. So, this is the thing and of course, you can see that. Uh, this would be a, a hip, uh, stupendous task, you know, trying to compute it this way. So, therefore, we will say that essentially we are looking for probability x greater than or equal to 65 and again add the uh, 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 correction continuity correction factor. So, it will be 64.5 and then uh, n p would be 100 into half and n p q will be 100 into half into half, which becomes 25. So, under root 5 and this is 50. So, this is what you are looking for okay. and this number comes out to be uh, 2.9. So, therefore, it is the required probability is 1 minus phi of the normal standard normal probability 2.9 okay, from minus infinity to 2.9 and this comes out to be 0 0.0019. So, which is very small and therefore, uh, the chance that you know with p as half the chance that the uh, uh, is that 65 people out of this 100 will have their uh, cholesterol lowered is very low and therefore, the diet will not get endorsed. So, anyway because the diet was not having as, as we said that probably the diet has no effect on the cholesterol <laughs> level. So, therefore, uh, it does not get endorsed. So, no loss nobody is lost. So, this is how uh, you know one can go on and uh, look at uh, different situations and then try to see. Uh, so, I just thought that uh, these two will also add to your uh, you know experience of uh, handling uh, you know these problems and also uh, uh, reinforce the idea of uh, you know computing uh, uh, you know uh, computing these uh, uh, what shall I say messy probabilities by uh, you know approximating through uh, 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 continuous random variables and making your task easy.